Hey everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Owen Fox and I um, uh, work as a life coach, a healer, a f physical, mental, emotional, body, mind, spirit consultationer and YouTube inspired video maker. I've written two books and I make loads of YouTube videos for f like free, inspired, helping the world and and yeah, that's what I do, body, mind, spirit. So I just want to introduce myself so you know who I am and you get a little bit of feel of me and what I off offer and my services to the world. So, moving on, a passionate subject of mine. <laughs> so, <clears throat> in this video this morning, I'm inspired to talk about uh, detachment. Um, and instead of just calling it detachment, I want to call it detachment from suffering. Bec and, and the premise of this is the fact that the the, one of the, the biggest rules of life is undoubtedly constant change. <clears throat> we live in a world of constant motion and change. <laughs> Cormac O'Sheehan, thank you very much. Good to, good to see you. <laughs> and thanks, Guy. <clears throat> so, um, we live in a world of constant change. And what I've seen in my past and um, what are people's lives, especially my life, because I can observe my own life the most, because I'm a huge uh, proponent of self-study and self-examination where we look at ourselves and find out, look at our behavior and study ourselves and our, our patterns and habits, uh, especially the ones that don't serve our highest happiness, health, peace of mind and well-being overall in life, our best balance and harmony. <laughs> Jonathan from, from the UK, Avocado, <laughs> we used to go shopping together. Thanks for your friendship at that challenging time. In my life. So um, let me see if I can go in here for better reception. <clears throat> Um, so, Summer says, yes, please shine light. Thanks, Summer. If anyone has any questions or comments or queries, you're welcome to leave the low in this live Facebook video. And I'll be sharing this on YouTube later for my YouTube um, subscribers. So, in my life, I used to have, like, I used to be attached to, what's it called? Like, knowing what was going to happen next. Like, I used to be in my comfort zone. I used to, like, feel comfortable or content being in a habit or routine even if it wasn't necessarily the best thing like if I wasn't happy in the relationship part of that like so much of that was my own responsibility and um, it wasn't just the other person or if I wasn't happy in studying you know I was like afraid to leave the, the either the relationship or the, the school or the education Maria says hi from Western Australia hi Maria mm -hmm. this is Florida in the US so also, I notice it in relationships with me and other people, but way less with me these days due to a lot of healing I've been doing last year, especially a huge amount of my childhood trauma was released when my last partner decided to like, like say, she doesn't want to be in a relationship anymore. So that was great. That's a, but sad at the time. <laughs> it was great overall. <laughs> I could see we weren't compatible. Um, but at the time, it triggered so much emotion in me. So, but uh, it's never good to be attached um, because whenever you're attached to something not changing or something staying in your life or someone staying in your life or s something remaining the same, you get, you're going to suffer. It'll lead to tension, fear, and anxiety right now before somebody either leaves or your job or your thing leaves. Like my only two possessions are basically my bicycle, which I don't even have right now because it's in Ireland, and my laptop, which is largely broken, which I don't really use too much anymore, and my phone which I'm using right now. But apart from that, like I don't really have too much um, things to be attached to. Like at the end of the day, I've already noticed this within myself. I actually don't really even care if my laptop is lost or broken or my bike is stolen. Because at the end of the day, it's not the source of my happiness and I can always replace it. But even if I can't replace it, like let's say a person or a family member or a loved one, a friend or a relationship, <clears throat> um, we, you can, the more unattached to possessing, owning, controlling, or having something in your life or somebody, the more you're able to be free from the blockages of fear, anxiety, tension, controlling, and possessing, and possessiveness, and to controlling, grasping, clinging, holding on tight, and stuffing and stifling someone's freedom and well being and happiness. The more you ha don't have those blocks, the more you're open vessel to have the feelings that are within us all, such as when an old woman falls across the road, it's our instinct to help someone when they're in, in desperate need, right? It's a natural good instinct. All of us are good at heart. 
So when you don't have the blockages, you do have the inspiration and the heart-centered alignment. And that leads to actual more unconditional love, care, uh, kindness, understanding, compassion, allowing freedom, consideration, thoughtfulness, any positive feeling whatsoever. Because your, your mind is less cluttered and clouded with the worry, fear, anxiety, and tension, and possessiveness and control, and formulating and like, all these formulations when you're trying to control something, you're trying to like develop a plan or like a strategy, less strategizing, less drama, less games, all that sort of stuff. You're less bogged down with clutter. It's the same way with health, everyone. The more we cleanse our body, and I have to say, cooking is probably potentially the number one. Cooking and processed food and addiction to all this cooked food and processed food, that clutters the hell out of us. Human species with false media, and um, we've been told at false information which suppresses us by the powers that be um, and, and then we get sick and tired and the, the number one way to control a nation is to have them tired and sick and full of toxins and denourished so toxicity and um, what's it called um, <clears throat> lacking nourishment is the two root causes of disease especially toxicity so when we remove the clutter and remove the blockages, we open up to higher energies, including physical health and physical energy. Like in my life, do you know that toxins actually cause you to be agitated and irritable? Like I would highly recommend doing a juice feast if you want to change your life. Like so a lot of people are moody and grumpy, not because of their mind, it's because it's because of the toxins, which highly influences them emotionally and energetically and also influences their mind. So Mel Pate says, I've been watching you and loving you for years. Thank you for being extraordinary. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. That's so sweet of you to say. It's like, I am extra, extra, extraordinary and so is everybody. We're all special, unique, extraordinary beings of love and light and fun and games and laughter. So that's all everyone saying in this video, everyone. I highly encourage you to look at this. Look at your perception towards how you view life. <clears throat> life is not meant to be stagnant and the same. We're supposed to expand, change and evolve and discover new, new things that we really like and want and gravitate towards. It's normal and natural to change your mind. That's why I don't make promises, basically speaking. Like, I prefer not to because what's the point? Like, anyone can change their mind. This is definitely true for weddings. Like, the typical, stereotypical, conventional, cultural wedding ceremonies, mm, there's too much like, I hope you make me happy. You're, I'm dependent on you and they're t thinking the same towards you and even true, even if we're like true misery and sickness till death to be part. So we're just going to stay like, both of us going to stay promised to be unhappy together. <laughs> it doesn't make too much sense. It's like fear, attachment. There's no point in that. Why not like be happier as friends and different relationship or whatever, you know? But one thing I want to say, Detachment or detachment from suffering, it means detachment from suffering. It doesn't mean like being standoffish or not caring or not involved or not caring or loving. It means more love, more care, more involvement. It just means less of the blockages, more of the good stuff. From this place, we can have way better relationships and to ultimately don't serve or don't work out or whatever. That's fine. You have a much more harmonious like healthier balanced moving on or change of role of that person in your life and if a friend decides you don't like it anymore fine that's okay like wish them well and like that's cool okay that's fine and then you practice the self-study and self-examination to see where you went wrong or made mistakes you, you, you let go of the blockages of stuff like self-blame or blame towards others judgment towards self or judgment towards us is fundamentally as a bad wrong or flawed person or them or us we can definitely judge and analyze and discern to say that behavior wasn't very good or productive or, or, or helpful or right or, or kind or nurturing or loving. But that's different than the intrinsic, fundamental, deep judgment that somebody, the person themselves, the being, is wrong, bad, or not good enough. <clears throat> I have to distinguish those two, my friends. And um, so I'm going to scroll down and I was saying stuff. Ah, oh, I do. I didn't see that. Demetrius Williams says, hey, yeah. hey, Demetrius. <laughs> Michael says, hi. Hi, Michael. Cormac says, I think your smoke alarm needs to be better. <laughs> Thanks, Cormac. You're right. <laughs> we definitely need a new smoke, uh, smoke alarm battery. <laughs> Michael gives an arm. Strong. Oh, hey, John Cairns is watching. Uh, he's, a, he's the Mangotarian. John Cairns is a fantastic YouTuber and... 
helper and healer of the planet too. He talks about detoxification and cleaning the body just like myself, but in his own unique, special, brilliant way. Mel says, why? Is obviously you're enjoying what I'm saying, Mel, so thank you. I'm happy to hear that. So if anyone has any questions or comments, feel welcome to leave them below. Um, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want any consultations or personal help, just to send me a personal message. Um, it's my passion and vocation to help the planet. I've been through like the mill, the suffering, the losses. I lost all my money. I lost all my health. I lost uh, my my biggest hope, dream, and and um, for a, a, a relationship too, which was last year, which is fantastic. Which I'm so glad it happened. It helped me to heal by triggering me. So yeah, I, I I've walked a lot of the life. I've been so I've had a lot of experiences of like hardship, and it's brought me to a place of compassion and empathy and understanding other people. Um, I'd never change my past and I'd, I'd never want to take away what happened in the past. And I even wouldn't want to like add on to my past, like more suffering or more happiness. Like right now I'm happy with what I got. That's the place to be everyone. The secret is to be, if you want to manifest, I, I'd rather call it allowing in it to be in a place of receiving. This is the secret everyone, honestly, in my opinion, it's the secret. Manifestation isn't about like forcing or fighting forward in a struggle and stress. It's about, getting into alignment, being inspired, taking more easy action. It's inspired fun action that's enjoyable or inspired and it's in the flow. <clears throat> it's not about pushing and enforcing like a lot of the books talk about. It's not about sitting on your, your chair at home imagining the lottery ticket either. It's not about that. I don't agree with the secret whatsoever about like sitting at home imagining checks coming in and then you just get checks. Yeah, maybe if you're lucky, you might be the odd person might get a check because they're getting a check. But the other 100 people don't, and that's now, you're never going to leave in one check for $30 or $500 or $100. <laughs> Inspired action and getting into alignment with synchronicities and your higher self is the way of allowing in the art of receiving, as Abraham called it, which I love Abraham, the art of allowing. Um, <clears throat> so when you raise your vibe and let go of the blocks, both physically by doing juice feasts, by switching to a raw food diet, or at least by doing juice feasts, and by letting go of the mental and emotional pain and blockages, um, you allow in way more abundance and happiness in your life. So the secret is right now to be satisfied, find as much satisfaction and appreciation and gratification to be gratified by things in your life. So be happy and glad and grateful and enjoy your life. Like, then more will come. Because, well, like I say, if, you, if you're not happy here, you can't be happy over there. If you're not happy with what you got, what makes you think you're going to be happy when you get more stuff? Because then you're going you're gonna to have what you got then. You have to develop a practice of being able to pro, uh, focus on what you like and appreciate it and be grateful for it. And my motto is love, cherish, appreciate, savor, and enjoy. If I can do that with non attachment to my relationship, to my loved ones, my things, I'm going to be he's the happiest person alive almost. And if they happen to go, I've done 100% what I could do, which is to love them and to love the things and to love the people and to love my partner. To love, to cherish them, to appreciate them, to enjoy them and to savor them when they're there. And then I've made the most of it. I've been like a sponge, which is 100% dry, and I've 100% soaked in the goodness of life and their gifts and offerings. And when you're not in the state, you're like a sponge, there's a lot of water in it and you can't absorb the new things that are coming into you, the new beautiful stuff, because you're not there, you're not able to. So that's why if you can't, if you're not happy with what you got now, you can't enjoy it and learn to focus the mind. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm doing a juice piece all at the moment, green smoothies and raw foods only. If you can't enjoy what you got now, you can't, you're not going to enjoy more so when you get it. Maybe you will for a while. But it could go away and then you'll be left in the exact same place. And maybe even worse if you've been attached. Surely even worse. So. This video has been about detachment from suffering. It's about being involvement in life. It's allowing the art of allowing and receiving an abundance. To loving, cherishing, appreciating and enjoying and savoring what you got right now. Feeling the abundance right now and then more will come as you raise your vibrations. As you tune into these frequencies and this state of mental focusing because what you think about you bring about everyone that's one of the most important things you never learn in life the buddha was right what you think you become he was brilliant only part of it is about the silent awareness like gangaji eckhart tolle papaji um ramana maharshi muji 
Only part of it is about the silent watching mind, the conscious stillness behind it all. Part of it is about meditation. Highly recommend meditation, but meditation is, is not only just sitting in a room. I way prefer nature walking as meditation. Anything that quietens your mind and brings you into a state of peace and harmony is meditation. It could be reading, it could be knitting, it could be sewing, it could be having a bath with essential oils and Epsom salts possibly, or even rock salt or sea salt. Running, exercising can be, um, bring your brain into a state of brainwave activity where you create a space of, of stillness or quietness or relaxation. And from this place of relaxation, then inspiration comes to you. Then you're in the art of allowing and receiving to your higher self. So it's not that you're thinking, because there's a huge difference, everyone. Most people don't know this. There's a huge difference between thinking, which you're trying to think. It's like trying to do and manifest your life, and thoughts coming to you. So that's where meditation, or whatever you want to call it, like I just described, swimming in the sea or the lake or the ocean, or the swimming pool. You, you create a space and then thoughts come to you. These are really, really good thoughts. They're inspirational, creative thoughts, solution-based and inspired, very productive, very helpful to other people in your self-thoughts. Have you ever tried to like solve yourself through a puzzle? A, a, a quiz or a puzzle or... A, it's hard, you can't force it. But when you stop thinking about it for a while, you forget about it, you have a nap, I'd highly recommend to get into alignment to have a nap or go for a walk. Go for a stroll, get it up your mind a little bit. And then it comes to you, and that's the art of allowing, that's the receptive mode, that's where you can create abundance and attract things in your life. So I hope that's very clear, everyone. It's extremely clear in my opinion. I hope it's clear for you. Dimitri says, what if you're happy and in a place of peace, but those around you are not there? How do you maintain that peace without being pulled down? Ah, I love that question. You pull them up by making sure your focus of thought, what you think about, you bring about, what your focus is. So if other people are like down and depressed and sad and down and negative and grumpy and giving out maybe or narking, and, and so if you start doing to them in your mind what they're maybe talking about or doing, you're going to go down to their level. So you need to maintain your focus and pull them up to your vibration or just give them space and let them to work through their, their emotions in their own time. Again, you don't force it. It's about relaxing. It's about possibly a nap or go for a walk. It's about maintaining a positive focus of love and appreciation on them, their best qualities. What I personally use in my life, my formula, because I notice when I'm fundamentally judging somebody, I get emotionally upset or angry or frustrated. My formula is I ask myself these three questions. What, in my mind, how am I judging them to be bad, wrong, or not good enough? And I can clearly see when I have a problem with somebody, it's because I have a problem, it's because I'm judging them fundamentally to be bad, wrong, or not good enough. Um, and that allows me to release pressure from me and it's get more into alignment. So, for example, let's say someone's cranky and upset. They're belligerent. They're unfriendly with me. Okay. How am I judging them to be bad, wrong, not good enough? Oh, okay, I'm judging them to be bad. I'm judging them. I feel that they're being wrong. I'm judging them to be wrong. And basically, in, in, in a very subconscious way, I'm thinking or feeling that they're not good enough, which is kind of sad to call somebody not good enough. So this helps me to have more compassion and peace and love and understanding for their suffering and pain, which, which is causing them to be out of sorts. And from that place, I can be way more gentle and inspired how to respond. So that's, a, that's my answer to that, Demetrius. So Guy says, yeah, contentment is a great game. <laughs> okay, everyone, hope this video helped. Um, if you have any questions or comments, do ask to subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel or friend me on Facebook. You're very welcome to. And to check out my books that are written or for one-to-one -one consultations, check out my web my website, which I leave in this video description, owenfox.org. And I also have nourishing and supportive herbs to help the physical body and mind and emotions too, which are very helpful by many people in their reviews and testimonials. And my website's called higherselfherbs.com, higherselfherbs.com. Other than that, have a beautiful day. And when you do a juice feast or switch to raw food or have more green smoothies in your life, and when you practice getting into alignment, you're going to be so much happier. I guarantee it. I promise you. You're in for a treat, as my, my friend John Rose says. <laughs> See, everyone, I've loved making this video. So, so good and happy to make it. Thanks for sharing the time. We've been really glad and happy to do this. Really good. 
Enjoy your day, everyone. Have a really good day. You're welcome to be Oh my God, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks.